Psalm 122 verse 1 says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Why was the psalmist glad? Why was he excited to go into the house of the Lord? Why was it that the moment they mentioned the house of the Lord, he got excited? He's happy, he's joyful. In other words, there is a longing in his heart for God's presence. There's a burning desire to meet with God, to fellowship with God, to hear God, to talk to God. That atmosphere of God's presence excites him. The atmosphere of singing, the atmosphere of singing and worship and praises, it excites him. The Father, the glory of God will come down and all his problems, all his problems will melt in the presence of God. They will disappear. Excites him. So every time they talk about the presence of God, there is a longing in his heart. What about you? Are you excited? Are you as excited as this man is? Does the house of God excite you? Does the presence of God excite you? Going to church, does it excite you? Psalm 84. I'd like to read from verse 1 to 12. How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. My soul longed, yea, even fainted for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cried out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow had found their house and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young even thy altars O Lord of hosts my King and my God bless are they that dwell in thy house they will be still praising thee Selah Selah means pause and think so let's pause a little This is not just a phrase from a man who has eaten and his stomach is full. These are not the words of a man who, who, who is drunk with wine. These are not the words of a man who somebody told him about God. These are the words of a man who has experienced God. A man who has had an encounter with his father and maker. Who has a relationship, a close one for that matter with Almighty God. He has tested the presence of God. He has tested outside of the presence of God. He has compared the two of them and he has come to a conclusion that the presence of God is better. And so he starts by saying how amiable, how exciting, how wonderful and glorious it is for me to stay in your tabernacle. How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. A loving place to be a beautiful place to be an atmosphere like no other an experience I cannot find elsewhere in other words he is magnifying the presence of God the tabernacle the house of God and there is a longing in my heart he said my soul longed my soul longed yea even fainted for the courts of the Lord my heart and my flesh cry out. So my whole being is crying out to be in your presence, to come to your house, to worship you, to glorify you, to magnify you, and to receive of you. This is a testimony of a man who has seen God. He observed that even the sparrows, the birds, they have found a place in the temple. They build their nets. We see it as a nuisance. We see it as desecrating the place. We see the best, you know, with their nests around the house of God as something that makes the place to look ugly. Am I correct? But he looks at it different. That these ones too, they enjoy the presence of God. They decide to live in the tabernacle of God. That's why they have come. They left the trees. They left the bushes. They came there to build their nest in the house of God. We may not be able to fully understand why the best do that. But one thing is sure, if the house of God does not attract, it will come. He 
He said, blessed are they that dwell in the house. There is blessing in the house of God. And they who dwell in the house of God are blessed. Not they who visit, they who dwell. In other words, they who dwell in the presence of God are blessed. If you are a man or woman of God's presence, the blessings of God will always overflow. Where else can you find the blessing if not in God's presence? God is a blesser. And when you encounter him and you are in his presence, definitely there will be a, a, you know, a distribution of the blessing. Like the choir spoke to us this morning in their song. Verse 5. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them, who passing through the valley of Baca, make it a well, the rain also fill the pools. The valley of Baca is Baca means weeping. So why they are going through the valley of Baca? Why they are going through the valley of weeping? Why they are going through the valley of pain and frustration and troubles of life? It is the presence of God that brings them joy. It is the presence of God that excites them. So you see, you cannot do without the presence of God to overcome your situation. You need God's presence. To assess the blessings, you need God's blessings. God's presence. Everywhere you look at it, the presence of God should be your longing, should be your heartbeat. I want to be there. I want to carry his presence. I want to always be in the presence of God. How am I able? Now when you read on, and then you get to verse 10, verse 10, he said, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. One day in the presence of the Lord is better than one thousand days outside of God's presence. One day. He has tested the difference. He has tested the presence of God. He has tested life outside the presence of God. And his conclusion is that one day, just a day in the presence of God is better. Better. Better than a thousand days in the beer parlor. Better than a thousand days in the drinking joint. Better than a thousand days with prostitutes and immoral people. Better than a thousand days watching movies. One day in God's presence is better than any other place you can be. Better than any political meeting. A family union meeting that you can never attend. Just one day. 